of us, I know, are exposed to these hazards. Yet the protection of the human body is of vital concern to all of us. And many of today's common safety devices have had their origins in specialized occupations. I'm Mark Fleming, here at the Rotunda at Dearborn, Michigan. I'd like you to listen in and look over the shoulders of some 100 safety experts from all over the country who are about to arrive here for an unusual safety forum. Some time ago, Cornell University established a research center devoted to safety and transportation. One of their prime concerns has been auto crash injuries and what could be done to prevent or at least lessen them. This year, something is being done, something resulting from this research, something practical, something available to us, the public. A very real forward step is being taken in the automobile industry, but right now, here come the safety experts, so let's go along with them and learn about it. On the 10th of December of 1954, I was the volunteer human subject for an experiment in which I rode a rocket sled from a standing start to 632 miles an hour in 2,800 feet. This is Colonel John Stapp of the Holloman Air Development Center in New Mexico. From 632 miles an hour, I came to a complete stop in one and four tenths seconds. The fact that a properly shock-mounted human body seated in the forward-facing position can sustain four tons of force applied within a quarter of a second and suffer no disability is just as significant for automobiles as it is for airplanes. Aviation experience has demonstrated that people can be packaged as effectively as merchandise was packaged to prevent damage. This is John Moore, Director of Automobile Crash Injury Research of Cornell University Medical College. These are some of Cornell's general findings. First, we find that the automobile package is a relatively safe structure. Our data indicate that ejection from the car more than doubles the risk of moderate to fatal grades of injury. This finding destroys the theory that it's safer to be thrown clear. About 40% of all the injured drivers are hurt by the steering wheel assembly. Approximately 38% of the passengers in the right and center front seats are injured by the instrument panel in these injury-producing accidents. 4% of the individuals seated in the front in injury-producing accidents are hurt when they strike the rearview mirror. Statistics such as Mr. Moore's indicate the injury-producing areas of highest frequency. Colonel Stapp's work has shown that there is a range of forces that the human body probably can tolerate. This is Alex L. Haynes, executive engineer of the Ford Motor Company. Our problem then becomes that of providing methods of protecting occupants, car occupants, involved in accidents that are not avoided. Our research and development program showed that it was possible to take immediate steps for reducing these injury-producing areas within the car. Let's go to the laboratory and we'll actually see how we develop these devices. Let's take this piece by piece. Let's consider the steering wheel first. You remember the statistics. The Cornell statistics show that 40% of the injured drivers are hurt by the steering wheel. Well, we have to do something about this. T consider an accident 45 miles per hour at the moment of impact. The unrestrained driver... Unrestrained driver? What yeah, do you mean by that? That's uh, the, the driver who does not use a belt. He's oh. not tied down to the structure of the car. Mm -hmm. 
the unrestrained driver, he's traveling as a projectile through the car at 45 miles per hour. That's the original speed of the car. The car is slowing down during this time, and the wheel, part of the car, is traveling perhaps 33 miles per hour. The relative speed... Relative speed, now that's a new term. Yeah, that's the difference between the speed of the driver's chest and the speed of the steering wheel. 45 minus 33, 12 miles per hour. So in other words, the driver is going at a faster rate of speed than the car. Yeah, it? that's exactly right. Uh, this pendulum here, you see, this weighs about the average weight of a driver, 167 pounds. We're going to swing this into the steering wheel here at 15 miles per hour. That's faster than the 12 miles per hour. Well, in other words, uh, in this uh, car then, in this particular case, is going at a greater rate of speed. Yes, it might be that the car may be going into the accident at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. Right. Lift up the hoist, please, and let's step back. Right. Now let's try this in slow motion. This is what happens to a conventional wheel. Notice, at the moment of impact, the rim breaks away, and the full weight of the driver's chest, of the driver, actually, is carried by this small area over this hub. This becomes a lethal instrument. It's a spear. That's what hurts the driver. We literally tried hundreds of different types of wheels before we arrived at the one that was acceptable. Let's see what happens. Now, in slow motion. Well, here's what happened to this wheel. This is a safety wheel. The driver's chest struck this rim, and then the whole weight of the driver was carried by this rim and, and spoke combination, and it absorbed energy as the spokes bent and yielded out of the way. But notice the important thing. The, the driver's chest never did strike this hub, the small area of the hub. That's well, important. All right, now, what would happen to a driver who was wearing a safety belt? Well, then the condition would be even better because then the driver would only be, the driver's chest would only be carrying one third to one half of the driver's weight because the rest of the driver or the lower part of his body would be carried by the floor structure through the belt. Well, now, we've covered the driver. What about the passenger in the right front seat? Well, that's another problem. Come on, I'll show you what we've done about that. Well, here we are. Here is an unpadded instrument panel. Mm -hmm. You recall the Cornell statistics. They showed that 38% of the injured passengers in the right front seat or in the center front seat, they were hurt by the instrument panel. Yes, I remember. Now, when the passenger's head strikes this panel in an accident in a crash of the type we've been discussing, the metal here will wrinkle, it will tear, thereby causing facial lacerations to the head or to the face. And under more severe conditions, the head may, you may get a skull fracture or you may get a concussion. Let's see what happens under a 20 mile per hour relative speed. Oh, relative. Yeah, I remember relative speed. Pull this back, will you please? See what I mean? Boy, this fellow must have a headache. Boy, I'm glad it's not my head. Let me give you an analogy which will crystallize what we're talking about, this business of crashes. All right. Here's an apple, conveniently placed. An apple like this made Isaac Newton, the famous physicist, physicist famous. That's the law of gravity. Yes, the law of gravity. Let me drop this. Isn't it a shame? It's bruised. Yeah, it's bruised. It's dented. But the seeds in here, they're perfectly all right. Nature provided protection for the seeds for just such a drop, such a fall. That's exactly what we're trying to do to our passengers in our cars. Here's a padded instrument panel. Feels like foam rubber. Yeah, it feels like foam rubber, but that's deceiving. This is a special type of material. It's of the expanded plastic <clears throat> family. This material is five times more shock absorbing or more energy absorbing than foam rubber. Let's see what happens during an accident. Will you pull this back, please? See the difference? Truly remarkable. In addition, we've reinforced the front seat, the, the front seat track. This further reduces the effective weight with which the passenger hits the instrument panel. 
there's one more item, a very important item. I can see this has to do with doors. You're right. You remember the Cornell statistics? They indicated that an occupant's chances are twice as good of, of escaping injury if he remained within the car during an accident. Yes. Here's what happens. This pillar tends to spring away from the door during an impact. Mm -hmm. Pull this door. Now, I'll show you, this, this will spring away. Why, the door flew open. Here's, here's the door with the safety door latch. Try this, pull this door out. Now, I'll, I'll impose the stress as I did before. Pull. Well, it doesn't open at all. All right, now open it as you would a regular door. Well, what did that? Well, the safety door latch. This rotor engages behind the lock plate on the striker element of the lock. It engages like this. It keeps the pillar from springing away from the door. Now, tell me, uh, how is all this research we've seen here today applied in practical use? Come with me. Incidentally, this car has the safety door lock. I see, and also the brand new safety belt. Yeah. Get that cushion. Strike the punch that cushion, will you? That instrument panel. Punch it. Punch it hard. That's it. That's our crash padding that we have on our instrument panel. And also the cushioning on the sun visor. Yes, that's right. Take a look at that safety rear view mirror. All right. And the new steering wheel also. Yeah. And this automobile has everything. Yeah, it has the new devices, the so-called safety devices. Now let's see how these devices actually work in a staged and, con and controlled, a real controlled crash. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to this one of our crash test areas. This morning, you're going to see two full-scale vehicle crash tests. These tests should help to demonstrate to you the effectiveness of these four safety features. The car in front of you, the red two-door, will be impacted on the right rear fender at approximately 35 miles an hour. I should also point out both of our crashes today, one will be slightly over 35 and the other slightly over 40. We have picked this speed because we have found by accident statistic data that half of the injury-producing accidents occur at speeds under 40 miles per hour. You will note on your right and my left the small table with the awning type cover, which contains all of the instrumentation which is recording what's happening in this parked car. In the car which is doing the impacting, which is a green and white four-door down the runway, we have two test dummies. Uh, one is in the driver's seat. He is wearing a lap belt, which is also instrumented. The one in the right front compartment, the passenger, is completely unrestrained. He will be permitted to fly within the automobile. The tow car which will run in back of this red car, and it will release its tow cable just before impact. An automatic brake application will be applied to the green and white corridor to prevent its runaway. This brake application will go on approximately six feet after impact. This car, incidentally, will spin around maybe 90 degrees and slide sideways some 16 feet. You will note the large instrument van down the track, which is cabled into the crashing car. Here we have all of our mobile instrumentation, and we record in the van what happens in the crashing vehicle. I should also mention that the two test dummies in the crashing car contain their own instrumentation. An accelerometer is in the stomach of the driver dummy, and one in the head of the passenger dummy. The dummy's heads have been chalked uh, with blue chalk, so you can see where they hit inside the car. I think we're about ready to roll now. Here is the same crash in slow motion.
first thing on the car that we hit, you will note that the driver dummy is still in back of the steering wheel, although he is angled slightly to the right. With this impact, you'll also note that the door, the right front door, did not come open. In the car which did the hitting, you will note that the visor has been bent where the dummy's head hit it. The, pat or the driver dummy being belted in place hit nothing. He impacted the steering wheel a little bit with his chest. Again, on this car, of course, no doors open because safety locks were included. We are going to impact with the blue and white corridor in the vicinity of the right front wheel. This, again, is another typical intersection accident. When I say impact speed, slightly over 40 miles an hour, the car actually, in the actual accident, could be running faster than this because we do not put the brakes on before the impact. In this car, you'll note the parked vehicle that we have a dummy in the rear seat. In this case, this dummy is also belted in place, and it will show you how a belt will keep you from flying sideways in the automobile. The car which is hitting this time will also have two belted dummies in the front seat. In this case, the driver dummy will be unrestrained so that he will impact the safety steering wheel. His head should also impact the safety visor. The right front dummy, in this case, will have a belt. Again, we will be measuring belt load, and you will note that when he jackknifes in the impact, he will impact the safety pad on the panel. Are we ready? Okay, Dick, let's go. Now, in slow motion, hey, that's quite a wreck. It sure is. But notice, the doors have stayed shut in this condition. Oh, I see. And uh, that's quite an important thing. Uh -huh. Ordinarily, these doors would have opened. Well, but can we have safety door locks that we have worked out to take care just of just such a condition? I see. Well, can you tell us a little something about our old friend in the back seat over there? Well, let's take a look at him. Fine. Look at this dummy. Uh -huh. This is Ferd number three. That's Ford Engineering Research dummy. This is the third one that we use connection with our work. Ferd. He wasn't named for Ferdinand the Bull, was he? No, not Ferdinand the Bull. This is an anthropomorphic dummy. It simulates the human being as much as it is possible to do it. He weighs about 180 pounds. Notice that this dummy was strapped in for this test. Uh -huh. This means that uh, the dummy was restrained and, it, and uh, it did not fly all over the car, so to speak, and perhaps either cause injury to another uh, occupant that may have mm -hmm. been here or to himself. Well, that's a common occurrence, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is a common occurrence in these type of crashes. I see. Well, let's take a look at the uh, other moving car. Yeah, let's take... This is a crashing car. Let's take a look inside that car. All right, fine. Say, can you tell me about those wires sticking out of the dummy? Yeah, those are attached to electronic instrumentation that we use in connection with this work. Mm -hmm. We have accelerometers in the dummy's heads, and they measure... These accelerometers measure the forces and decelerations with just such conditions, these impact conditions. I noticed that far dummy, too, has his head on the dashboard. Yes, and uh, this new type cushioning on our dashboard probably reduced the uh, injury on this dummy, and also it uh, reduced the uh, facial lacerations that usually occurs in this type of accident. I see. And notice this wheel. Uh -huh. This wheel probably saved the dummy's chest and probably saved the dummy from severe injury because of the recessed hub. Oh, that's very interesting. You know, with all this uh, wreckage here, I'm going to try this door, see if it opens and closes. It opens all right, and it closes very well, too. You know, I'm very impressed with all the work being done on the automobile crash safety. Yes, we think we've made a good beginning. There's still some, a lot of work to be done, and of course, we intend to continue. But there's still one thing I'd like you to see this afternoon. Let's go over to the styling wheel and uh, let's see what's over there. All right. This must be an important announcement because Henry Ford II is addressing the group himself. We at Ford Motor Company 
feel a particular gratitude to the Automobile Crash Injury Research Project of Cornell University Medical College. Through its statistical sampling and its analysis of injuries to people involved in automobile crashes, the Cornell Group, along with others, has helped us materially in setting up our own crash injury research program and the developing of our safety equipment designed to reduce injuries in event of an accident. I am most happy, therefore, to present at this time $200,000 to Cornell University so that this vital program may be expanded. The purpose of this grant is to increase substantially the testing sample, the research base upon which the project is developing its findings. Furthermore, we wish to announce that all of the pioneer safety features and the specifications and design of those features developed by Ford Motor Company are to be made available to any automobile company that wants them. We also will release any and all information which has been developed through our new research program in the crash injury field. I want to point out that gathering this information has taken a lot of diligence and devoted effort at considerable expense. But we want to give this knowledge away to anybody that will use it. We hope they will take it. And such is our report for this year on what is being done here. It is a bold and significant step. Its aim is your safety, you the driver, and you the passenger. Its aim is to prevent needless injuries and help save the most precious thing in the world, human lives.